This is Just a Thought, episode 23, Things I Can't Change and Want to, part one. Hey everybody, just FYI, you might be able to hear my dryer going in the background, so just know that I am one of the lucky people in the world who has a washer and dryer, and it's going to make a little noise today, but I'm just grateful I will have clean, dry clothes soon. Also, after last week's podcast, my husband wanted you all to know that there are 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds in a day. But with leap year and all that, it apparently evens out to 24 hours. Just so y'all don't feel so sad about not having 24 hours in a day, we kind of sort of do. So, on to today's podcast. Nearly two years and 11 episodes ago, I talked about dreaming big and achieving the impossible. And some of you came to me with questions or comments in the form of questions like, I wish my thoughts could change my circumstances, but sometimes they just can't. And so I want to talk about when we feel trapped in a circumstance and wish life was different than it is. Can our thoughts change those circumstances? And should they? First, let's review what a circumstance is. A circumstance is what happened. It is not what didn't happen. It's not a question. Questions are thought. So, if I have a goal to not eat any dessert, but I do anyway, my circumstance would be, I said I wasn't going to eat chocolate cake, and I ate chocolate cake. The circumstance would not be, I failed at achieving my goal. I failed at achieving my goal is a thought I could have about the circumstance. I might also think, I wish I hadn't eaten the cake, or I shouldn't have eaten the cake. These are all thoughts, right? I might also think, I need a new goal that includes me eating chocolate cake. Or I could think, hmm, I had a goal not to eat chocolate cake, but when I was at the party, I really wanted some, and I decided to have some. I wonder why I chose to do that. Do I want to continue on with the previous plan? Why didn't I want to eat chocolate cake? Do I still feel that way? And then I'd go from there and determine what I might do differently in the future if I really want to have a different result in the future. Or I might decide I'd rather eat chocolate cake than achieve other goals. And that's totally fine. When we're feeling stuck in a circumstance, it's super helpful to do a thought download. Just grab some paper, set a five minute timer, and write and write and write. When you're done, you'll have a whole bunch of thoughts and possibly a couple of circumstances. Circle one of those thoughts. It really doesn't matter which one. But if you have difficulty choosing which thought best fits the result you want or the situation you feel you're stuck in, then set up a model. What is your circumstance? What is the thought you chose? What is the main feeling that thought brings up? The key word here is feeling. Where in your body can you feel that word? Then the action. I haven't talked about action a lot. What does the feeling motivate you to do? And you can have a few things here, right? It can motivate you to do things or to not do things. And lastly, what results do you get from your action? Any results you like? Any you dislike? After your model is done, you can ask yourself some of these questions to bring awareness. I got these questions from the Be Bold program. What is my role or fault in this situation? Am I willing to be wrong about this? How do I want to feel? I wonder why I chose that thought. What would I be thinking if this wasn't a problem? How might the opposite be true? What does someone who has already done this think? What would my future self tell me? What feels like love? So let's say I'm wanting to dream a little and I think I want to own a house by age 30. This is a circumstance because I had that thought. It is now a circumstance because I am examining a thought I had or still have. During my thought download, I'll have a ton of thoughts about this circumstance. 
So the thought I'm going to choose is, I believe it's possible. That thought brings me feeling of hope. I know I only said to put one feeling here, but quite honestly, I usually do three. (laughs) But Jody Moore and Brooke Castillo always recommend you just do one feeling. So yeah, do what you want. (laughs) So the three feelings I have there are hopeful, excited, and curious from the thought, I believe it's possible. My action, I look around for proof that I could own a house by age 30. I make a plan on how I could work towards it. I don't need a whole plan or all of the how, just what I have available now. How could it be possible? The result of that thought, I believe it's possible, is I begin making it possible. Okay, back to the question. Can our thoughts change our circumstance? Yes and no. They can change our feeling about a circumstance, which is kind of the most important part. Sometimes, after our feelings change, we realize we don't need the circumstance change we thought we needed to fill what we want to fill. Other times, we still want that circumstance to change. In that case, our thoughts can change our actions, which will change our results. One of the biggest things I hope to get across to you today is to figure out why you want to change a circumstance in your life. If you could snap your fingers and change your circumstance, what would be different? How would you feel? What thoughts would you be thinking? And why aren't you willing to think those thoughts right now? Six years ago, when I was really new to using the CTFAR model that I just explained to you, I was trying to explain it to some family members and I used this example. I erroneously said to my cousin that the point of the model is to find the positive side of things. Then I tried to find the positive side of the theoretical example of, let's say you had cancer. And I put her name in the circumstance line. I said, let's say Elena has cancer. And then I got confused because I couldn't figure out how to make her feel like that was a good thing. (laughs) I realize now that the goal of all this thought work and using the model is not to find the positive side of everything, and it's not to be used on anyone else to try and make them feel differently than they're feeling either. It's not used to make one feel happy all the time or to make us perfect or to become only positive vibe robots. (laughs) It's to learn to see life a little more clearly, to accept what is while also being intentional about what we want in the future. It's a practice in showing up in a way that feels right to us and thinking thoughts that bring us peace. It's a way to be in control of our own agency and to recognize others' same right to think how they choose. It's a way to help us love ourselves and each other and God more perfectly. It's about embracing reality instead of resisting it. So I was wrong in thinking that our goal in thought work is to make everything positive. It's not. The goal is to make us aware of what is so we can use our agency to help determine what will be. And surprisingly, more often than not, the more intentional we become, the more power we have over our results and our circumstances. Next week, I'm going to do part two of this episode, and I'm going to talk about why I'm afraid to dream big and why you might be too. Join me next week. Thanks for listening. I'm your host, Christina Stead. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ and a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He loves you. He loves me. And he loves us. This is Just a Thought, a podcast for parents ready to change their mind and change their lives. 